Hi, welcome to the Mad Max channel. So today we have Space Flight Simulator. Quick review of the game. Kind of like it. It's good fun, actually. So you've got the typical menu to uh, tutorials. You've got text tutorials or video tutorials. Settings, not particularly much. Music, sound, screen rotation, and frame per second. Uh, obviously, you can have the game in, you know, wide angle or upright like this game kind of plays better upright like this because rockets have a terrible habit of being quite long now typical procedure of building we can pick basic parts which is basically all the parts you normally need or you can separate them to engines or fuel tanks uh, utility pieces structural pieces fin pieces and basically all you do is you put your finger on and drag it over when required so, drag across. So, we're going to put commander section, parachute, separation, fuel tank, small engine. Going to do another separation. It automatically does a cover over the engine, which looks cool. And as you can see, this is why I pick upright for the game, not sideways. You can play it sideways, but, you know, upright is probably better. Fuel tanks together. Engine. I'm going to do uh, booster separation parts. Basically, to activate stuff, you just click it while in game. So, if you've got three uh, separators, you click each separator quickly and then you can uh, disconnect your boosters, as one would put it. Right, time to put our booster sections on. game itself is free to play from Google Play Store. It is a good game. Uh, so far, no particular obvious bugs behind it, which is good, really. I do really like the game. Uh, nose cones for aerodynamics. Right, so, obviously, you can uh, exit, save, or load a rocket. So we want to pick which engines are running. Bottom right is thrust control. Bottom left tells you what your full uh, status is. Top right is height and velocity. In the middle top, two arrows. They are for speeding up time or slowing down time. Uh, bottom control is for left or right, which sounds very basic for control. So you've got fixed throw. Top left, you've got save load. Back to build, loading up. If you press map, it brings you to this, which is basically, obviously, a map. So you got Earth, you got the Moon, some other little pieces of junk which are chucked into space. And they go all sorts of different planets. Now, that will be a challenge to get to them. Trying to land on the Moon is not that easy in the game. Okay, okay, let's zoom back in. Now we're running out of fuel on our main engines. We have picked up a decent speed. So let's get this thing prepared. Right, next engine. Let's separate these boosters. Off we go. Next. Off we go. And you'll notice a small arrow flying around. That basically points in which direction you happen to be going. Okay, okay, we're leaving the atmosphere. And for those who don't know, that funny weird line is our projected course, which means if we continue as we are without accelerating, we will plummet to Earth. Not really the challenge we intend to do today. So we're going to continue this uh, course with the fuel we've got, which isn't a lot left, but it will be sufficient.
I also have a link below for this game for the Play Store. Right, separate the next module. Now we're down to, well, reserve fuel. Right, okay, okay. See the finely dotted line? That is just saying where our encounter is. Now we're going to have to reduce uh, throttle, turn the craft a little bit, head down the little line for a little while. So we're going to use time acceleration to get ahead a little bit. So as you can see, the moon is running away from where we would account it. So what we need to do is a cost adjustment, which involves not using too much fuel. So we still need fuel for landing. And as you can see, with a very little amount of fuel, we can do a course correction now. Should have probably done it slightly sooner, but you know, I'm not quite a rocket scientist. Right. If we kept it like this here, we won't crash and we'll just circle Earth many, many times. At some point, we'll probably hit the moon, but you know. Right. Getting close to encounter. In a second, a nada dotted line should appear, but in the circle where the moon is. To roughly tell us where a count is. There we are. I'm zoomed into the moon. Oh, wait, looks confusing, but it's not. So we can see we're going to encounter the moon now. Let's time accelerate again, get us as quickly as possible to the moon. Hmm, taking too long. Let's speed up a bit more. Right, we're heading towards the moon at rapid speed. We need to do a small course correction. Currently, we're just going to shoot right around the moon. We need his engine burn for a second or two. Right, that'll do. Let's speed up again. Like I say, landing rockets on this game is not as easy as it goes, but as it goes as a space flight simulator, I'd say it's actually comprehensive enough. It's got all the controls you basically need, could have done with a couple more parts, slightly more robust of things, or a mode where you can select whether you want realistic or this, um, you know, like a mod section where you pick unlimited fuel or um invincibility would be nice or well, you know two modes creative mode and um, realistic mode that'd be the only thing i'd change with the game really so it would be quite funny to build rockets to go to the other planets and actually land on very complicated planets landing on moon should technically be easy but it's not i think matters worse i completely forgot to put landing struts on Right, we're down to 10 kilometers now. Sorry, miles. Mm. 
Right. The moon landing itself is actually kind of complicated. And the reason for that is, is thrust control. Too much thrust and you'll actually start heading away from the moon. To little thrust, you still pick enough speed to hit the moon, but it doesn't take a lot. I'm using less than 10% thrust, and you know I am going to come to a gradual grinding halt eventually. Oh, we're going the wrong way. Too much thrust. No. Oh. Not realize it soon enough. Damn, we went back to space again. Right. Just pay attention to what we're doing. We need to use thrust. Need to use thrust, come on. Yeah, touch screen controls. So that is how you don't do a moon landing. So let's attempt a different landing with a craft that does have landing struts on it. So obviously you can pick different various rockets. As an example, here's a big boy. And tell you what, that is actually less... Uh, it's not as actually as good as the one I just used in the previous test. It's actually the first stage is too heavy and the second stage is too heavy. So it doesn't accelerate quickly enough. Surprisingly enough, less would be more. So back to the main menu. Right, now would be the time to show you guys an actual moon landing. Yes. That would be the idea. Right, attempt number two. Use the similar rocket as we did do in the first run, except for this time I've got landing gear on it. We're basically going to do the same, besides we're going to pay a little bit more attention to the throttle and height and velocity.
Right, time for the landing gear. We've got engines on the burn. Uh, running on fumes when it comes to that engine. Landing gear. Yes, I'm being very um, optimistic. We shall do this landing this time round. Put the engine on our slow burn. We got the full fuel tank available, so we haven't got an excuse for not using it. Well, that didn't go entirely to plan. We lost the landing gear. Right, can we land? Throw. How slow do you need to land this thing? I'm guessing about five meters per second would be a tolerable level. I know, a little bit too much throttle again. God's sake, stop hopping. Right, going back down again. Pay attention to meters. Do you want to hit the ground too hard this time? Well, we have something successful. We have landed on the moon. Take off? No. These guys are stranded. So, on that note, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. Do like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.